Hi right, guys, it has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a gorgeous, little bit chilly here in the great state of Texas. It is 48 degrees here on Tuesday, January 24th, 20. 23 somewhere around there so of course what today is guys is we've all been waiting all us doomers waiting for baited with bated breath to see if the you know these concerned scientists were actually going to finally admit that doomsday was about oh i don't know 1970 <coughs> but i guess they they've turned it up what was it we 10 seconds so we're now 30 seconds to doomsday uh <laughs> or 90 seconds now they turned it up to us so we're now 90 seconds to till doomsday according to the the uh bunch of concerned scientists who are obviously not doomers and i mean my immediate reaction uh, upon reading that uh, that we have yet to reach doomsday on planet Earth. Well, it's like, are they, are, are, are the scientists the dumbasses, or do they just think that we're so stupid? And it got me to thinking, you know, I, I've been hanging out with uh, a lot of normies the past week down here. I've been spending quite a bit of time having social intercourse with normies and one of the recurring themes that I've been noticing uh, over the week in my social gatherings is this new uh, meme going around in I guess with everybody now talking about that the human race just seems to be getting dumber that uh, just just going around in society bumping into clueless morons and I, and I and I'm hearing this from normies and so uh, I've been enjoying you know being a doomer when the normies are sitting there going like hey, Mon, have you noticed that people seem to be just just be getting dumber than they've been and, and blah 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 so I have managed to keep my mouth shut when a normie asked me if people are uh, getting getting dumber now I did enjoy this one uh, normie buddy of mine yesterday you know he said he he saw my <laughs> my interview on soft white underbelly and uh, he was he said he was he was quite impressed, but uh, he has the idea for a new a a new T-shirt, a new Doomer T-shirt. Is I used to be an apocaloptimist. Uh, he is so. He, I think we might have a new Doomer uh, that he calls himself after watching that. That he is a former apocaloptimist so i don't know maybe there maybe there is hope here 90 seconds from doomsday but anyway so I'm, I'm, I'm having these conversations and i open up you know what medium digest and probably because my computer has been listening in on I have this essay by this feller feller by this fellow named peter shinosky Peter Shinosky is a former lender and banker reassimilating himself into normal life. Yes, so this is a former banker uh, reassimilating himself into normy life. And I guess a part of doing that, I didn't realize that lenders and bankers were not normies. But he is asking the question now that he is back into the uh, hanging out with normies, asking the question, 
are we just getting dumber? Is technological progress highlighting our existing idiocy, or is something larger at play? So let's see what this is all about. <clears throat> Take it away, uh, Peter Shinovsky, New Normie. <clears throat> I've been getting this feeling frequently lately. One could describe it as sort of surreal, almost as if there's some large cosmic joke that I'm not in on. I read the news, I listen to others' conversations, and read the comments on articles. My takeaway from those experiences is less than pleasant. Usually I find myself asking, how dumb are we? Particularly, I liked his talk about reading the comments. You know, reading the comments to my soft white belly interview have, I did not think it was possible for me to think that people, just the general population of normies is more clueless than I thought. Uh, and, and until I started reading these comments, uh, and reading the comments to news articles, uh, if there's any doubt in, in your mind. So, how dumb are we? I struggle with that answer. I w read a horror sci-fi novel a few years ago. I won't say which one for fear of spoilers, but a major plot involved the concept of timeliness. <clears throat> Essentially, the theory was that every once in a while, something would go extremely astray in our known world. The result would be compartmentalized into an alternate timeline that began moving forward parallel to the saner original version. My surreal feeling is that I have been spun off into one of those disastrous alternate timelines. How else could you explain the widespread ignorance, plethora of misinformation, total disregard for science or fact, and any other number of alarming things occurring right now. We, my friends, must be the others. Or we're just colossally stupid as a society and getting even dumber every day. We have to at least consider the chance that we are in a downward spiral with regardless to intelligence, even if there may be other factors at play. I mean, after all, there have always been horribly stupid sections of society and misinformed people making important decisions. It just didn't always seem so blatant. And maybe seem is the operative word. Is it possible that we're just more aware of ignorance because of the ease with which we can access information now? Or is it really spreading through our society? We'll see if there's any real evidence in favor of either argument. So let's, let's look at the idiocracy argument. By now, most people should be aware of the movie Idiocracy, if only due to the abundant references to it in articles like this one. Essentially, the concept was this. Less intelligent people had far more children and parented and educated them in a much worse fashion than others. The result over the course of several hundred years was that eventually intelligent people were wiped out altogether and that what was left was, well, not impressive. And I have actually heard uh, what I consider to be clueless morons whenever I am doing one of my, uh, you, you know, sterilized the human race 
and trying to convince people to get sterilized. I honestly don't know when I, when I get these comments back, which I do all the time, that if people basically saying if doomers, if the only people who got themselves self sterilized were the people who understood that we need to get ourselves sterilized, then the smartest people on the planet would just non-breed themselves out of existence. And I've always thought people are joking. I honestly don't know if people are joking about that. Maybe it does have some validity. <clears throat> Idiocracy was obviously a comedy with a not-so-subtle social commentary thrown in, but it has since become a rallying cry <clears throat> of sorts for those who feel like we are living in the early stages of that disaster. I can't say that I disagree with them, at least not at face value. The theory is sufficiently well-known in research to have a name the dysgenic fertility theory. Evidence supporting it, to be fair, is a relatively recent phenomenon. I'd also not say that there's enough evidence to really support its assumptions either. In fact, for much of the 20th century, the opposite was true. I guess during the 20th century, each generation gained a few IQ points on the prior one. Only for those born around 1975 and thereafter have there been signs of that reversing. And he has a lot of links, you know, linking uh, over to that research showing that IQs have been falling uh, since people being born at about 1975. <clears throat> But even that data doesn't necessarily support the dumber people having more kids theory as many studies found the decline to be the declines to be within the same family. Generally speaking, when I see data arguing a correlation between something while other studies argue the exact inverse correlation, I conclude that there is no correlation at all. <clears throat> so other factors are afoot if, in fact, we are getting dumber at all. Now, I am a fairly intelligent guy. Plenty of you have me beat for sure, but <clears throat> compared to the general population, I'd say I have the edge. Where I really excel, though, is in soft skills, reading people, predicting their behavior, and determining things like what approaches will work best or which jokes they will enjoy. I can also usually get a good feel for what type of smarts I'm dealing with. <clears throat> So I cannot say that I have noticed an uptick in the amount of completely idiotic people I encounter. No, it's more the confidence and brashness of those same people that's increased. Provided with the internet, they can also find like-minded people who believe the same incorrect or incoherent nonsense than they do and reassure themselves of their beliefs through sheer numbers. And so, of course, guys, this was one of the main, uh, main themes in the comments and the thousands of comments from all of those clueless morons on my uh, soft white underbelly interview. Of course, they were claiming that I, you know, most of it, the vast majority was ad hominem attacks on me that I am the clueless moron. 
anybody who believes there are too many people on this planet uh, is an absolute clueless moron. And then they, you know, then they lump anybody who agrees on any level with Sam Mitchell uh, that, that anybody, it's pretty much doomers, uh, are, are the complete total morons. And you understand that uh, they're probably, I don't know if there's more flat earthers than doomers or not right now. Uh... So, so who knows? Uh, you know, many people would would choose doomers to illustrate uh, this very point. So, who knows? Are we a bunch of flat earthers? And the so Peter Shinovsky very well could have doomers lumped in uh, to that paragraph. Okay, back to Peter. We could also be dealing with a problem that doesn't necessarily trace to intelligence differences, but more to differences in the pervasiveness of bad information. That is something I can get behind. The percentage of people susceptible to bad information in 1972 may be the same as it is today but the ease with which that information can be accessed and spread has changed, leading to far more individuals being taken in by bad data than there were in the past. And, uh, of course, I, I am 100% uh, in, in favor with, with this guy of this argument that, uh, you, you know, 98% uh, of the shit that you read on the internet, well, 98% of the shit that you read in social media, I would say at least, what, 75, 80% of anything you find on the internet is unadulterated horse shit. And I would say well over 90% of social media is it, just unadulterated horse shit, uh, j j just absolute mind garbage. And this is what he's talking about. Uh, I could make a comment, but I, I will leave it alone and get back to Peter. But uh, I certainly think that, uh, that, that social media has to take a big share of the blame and of course people would point out my channel Collapse Chronicles as being a major I mean a lot of clueless morons probably including Peter would look at Collapse Chronicles and uh, and, and listen you know to the various uh, ecologists and climatologists and uh, you know uh, I I anybody who w would I anybody who would uh, would interest Sam Mitchell enough, you know what I'm saying. Uh, there you go. If he had to look for an example of what he's talking about, understand he could be talking about this channel. Okay, all this naturally brings us to the internet. Generally speaking, I am against gatekeeping practices in life, in knowledge, in careers, in anything. That said, nothing makes a stronger argument in favor of gatekeepers than what the internet has, quote, accomplished. Until the advent of 24-7 cable news and subsequently the internet, I'm not sure we were aware of how fortunate we were. Fortunate to have a few principled people in a select few positions of journalistic power. Tom Brokaw, Dan Rather, and even Peter Jennings, along with their editorial teams, took some degree of pride 
in being the nation's source of what had happened and what was going on, facts were reported in a straight, nightly manner, and very rarely was an obvious agenda at work. And I can hear uh, a, a, a lot of people howling, laughing over this, uh, uh, over this, that there was no agenda at work before the internet. And you know, back in the days uh, of the big network, of the big three network TVs, and I actually remember these days. And, and by the way, guys, did you know that Walter Cronkite was a major doomer, a serious doomer? Uh, good Lord, if they had given that man free reign. Uh, <coughs> so, let's see, did the three major networks have an agenda or not? According to Peter, they rarely had an agenda, but we will move on. Okay. <clears throat> That's not to say that there were not biased organizations. There most certainly were. Many papers of the 20th century had a well-established liberal or conservative bent, but that's exactly it. It was well established. You were cognizant of what your brain was being fed, and it came from a few well-placed directions. Now it is noise from every which way with little to no vetting, editorial standards, or even easy means to validate whether what is printed now is true or not at least online, that is. <clears throat> As an example, let's say it's 1976 and you're not the brightest person on earth. There's nothing wrong with that. It's never been about the smartest person. It's never been about who the smartest person in the room is. And there are plenty of other areas in which a person might be skilled or contribute mightily. Still, you participate in presidential elections and thus have some small say on the direction of our nation. Now, this individual is not likely to be a voracious news or other reader. They occasionally turn on the 30-minute nightly news broadcast where they're fed a fairly straightforward account of what happened that day. This person may tune into a debate or two and make a determination from that. I don't like that peanut guy, or I don't believe in a thing this Ford guy is saying after all that Nixon stuff. Right or wrong, it was unlikely you'd be spun off into lunatic land from your nightly consumption. But now, let's say it is 2016, and we're dealing with a person of a similar competence level. He is unlikely to read the hard news or any literary publications, and the goings-on of the world are boring when there's so much else you could be spending your time watching or doing. I don't begrudge them that. But this same man is, on, he says, man, I don't know, this same person is almost certainly on social media, which has the highest bullshit to reality ratio of any place in the known universe. Since his baseline knowledge is negligible, his ability to sort truth from fiction is almost nothing. He is drawn to the more inflammatory headlines that vaguely resonate with some already held skepticism he's held his whole life. He believes them. He gets angrier radicalized anyone who sides with these people is an enemy. And now we've identified why we appear so confidently and brashly idiotic. And again, many people uh, in, the, uh, in the comments to my soft white underbelly pointed this out 
that not only was I a clueless moron idiot, but how I was just so absolutely confident. I was so confident in my view that there's too many people on the planet that it went beyond confident, it went beyond brash, that I was, you know, just an absolute narcissist, that you either believed every single word out of Sam Mitchell's mouth, how doomed we are, you know what I'm saying. Uh, so there are plenty of people who would certainly, Peter probably, if Peter saw that interview, my guess is Peter would agree with those comments. <clears throat> Back to Peter. I talk about this topic often because I am literally perplexed as to how we begin solving it. The irony that the very thing that allowed quick, easy access to all the world's information has actually been used to erode facts is not lost on me. I know there are great applications for new technology, too. I just cannot fathom how to solve all the negative aspects. In my ideal fantasy world, social media just self-immolates and disappears after I go to sleep at night. I'd gladly forfeit my writing in exchange for the removal of all those other, more toxic platforms, a small sacrifice for the greater good. Obviously, that won't be happening. So, what do we do? Require an IQ test before internet access is granted? That has to break at least a thousand equal protection laws. Hire a team of 500 lawyers to relentlessly pursue libel and defamation cases and tell those who publish slanted or untrue information or coward into submission. You know, that's, uh, I guess, what YouTube is doing now. That sounds like an Orwellian nightmare, and those people don't cower anyway. I don't believe <clears throat> this is one of those problems that we can just defer addressing misinformation polarization, and mental health woes wrought by the information age and all that it carried with it are destroying societies all around the globe. Waiting for some sort of self-correction is foolish. The hatred grows stronger daily. I cannot imagine the team of fact-checkers that would be needed to keep the internet in line, and they would inevitably disagree with each other, just as the rest of us do. Maybe better education in adolescence will help our newer generations suss out the nonsense, but that would still leave us with 30 to 40 years of what we currently have, and that isn't working. I am open to any and all suggestions. While we may not be getting dumber as a whole, we are definitely ceding power to the loudest and often most incorrect among ourselves. It is time for the sensible ones among us to stand up for something. We need it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you, Brother Peter. I would, uh, I really would love to send, send that guy uh, my uh, interview on, uh, <laughs> on, so on soft white underbelly and see how many of the uh, boxes uh, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles would tick in his uh, clueless moron category. But anyway, it is a gorgeous day. And the little dog uh, says it is time for a walk in the great state of Texas on this beautiful day. 
I highly suggest you get out there and take a walk on this beautiful day while you still can. Bye guys.